Headway 5th Edition Intermediate Students Book, Class Audio by Liz and John Soares and Paul Hancock Published and copyright Oxford University Press, 2018 CD 4 10.1 What do you see? These are great fun. Let's see if we can work them out. OK. I can see two rabbits. Two? No. That one isn't a rabbit. It looks like a rabbit to me. It's got big ears. No, no, those are horses' ears. That picture's a horse or a seal. Hmm. It might be a horse, but I can't see a seal. But there's definitely a rabbit in this picture. A rabbit and a duck. Yeah, they're easy to see. Now, what about this one? I can see the word good. Good? I can't see good, but I can see evil. That's interesting. <laughs> I can't see evil. Oh, yes, now I can. I can see both words now. That's really clever. Oh, this drawing's clever too. It looks like four shelves, but there can't be four. Yeah, four or three. It depends how you look at it. And this is another clever drawing. Which one? The one with a parallel bar. Parallel? It doesn't look parallel at all. It looks like a seesaw. It is parallel. I checked it with a ruler. Wow, amazing. The diagonal lines must be creating the illusion. Yeah, I think you're right. Now, what about the guy with the earring? He could be looking straight at me. On the other hand, he... He might be looking at me. <laughs> and that guy, the soldier, doesn't he look miserable? That's not a soldier. It's someone touching their toes. It must be a soldier. He's wearing a helmet. And he's got his eyes closed. Really? I can't see that at all. But look at the eyes in this one, the skeleton. It looks like something from a horror movie, and it's wearing an earring too. Yeah, this one's really weird. But look more closely. It's not a skeleton, and it's not an earring. It, it just looks like a skeleton. Huh? It's an old-fashioned lady looking at herself in a mirror. No. A lady? It can't be a lady. And what's the earring? I'm not so sure about that. It may be a candlestick. <laughs> well... Whatever it is, it's scary. OK, good fun. Is that the lot? 10.2 Fact or Fiction 1. Sunflowers turn to follow the sun. Fiction. It's true, there are flowers that follow the sun, but, despite what many people believe, the sunflower is not one of them. Certainly, when you see a field of sunflowers, the flower heads are facing more or less in the same direction, but always in the same direction, from sunrise to sunset. 2. The milk of a hippopotamus is pink. Fact. It is true that the colour of a hippo's milk is bright pink. This is because the milk contains two unique acids, and one of these is red, which, when mixed with the white milk, turns it pink. Hippos nurse their babies for about a year, and are the only mammals to produce pink milk. 3. Salt water boils quicker than fresh water. Fact. Salt water boils faster than pure water because the salt water has a lower heat capacity. In other words, it takes less energy to raise the temperature of salt water than pure water. This means that the salt water heats up faster and gets to its boiling point quicker. 4. A duck's quack doesn't echo. Fiction this is a much-quoted scientific myth, but it is not true. Scientists have done experiments to prove this. But where did this myth come from? Perhaps it's because quacks aren't usually loud enough to produce an echo.
Five. A toilet flush rotates in a different way depending on which hemisphere you are in. Fiction. Some people like to believe that the flow of water down the drain in sinks, bathtubs, or toilet bowls changes according to whether you are in the northern or southern hemisphere. This is not true. Drains can flow both clockwise and anti clockwise in both hemispheres. 6. Hurricanes always have girls' names. Fiction. This used to be true. From 1953 to 1979, only female names were used, but now both men's and women's names are used. One name for each letter of the alphabet. The same lists are reused every six years. These are the first seven names for 2020. Arthur, Bertha, Cristobal, Dolly, Edward, Faye and Gonzalo. 7. Elephants can't jump. Fact. Elephants have the same number of bones in their feet as other mammals, but they can't jump. This is because the bones in an elephant's foot are more closely packed together than in other mammals, so they do not have the flexibility that you need to jump. 8. Too much sugar makes children hyperactive. Fiction. Sugar does not change kids' behaviour. In 1994, a research study proved that a sugary diet did not affect behaviour. But sugar does change one important thing. Parents' expectations. After hearing that their children have had a lot of sugar, parents are more likely to say their child has become hyperactive, even when the sugar was not really sugar, but only a placebo. 9. Fish have a three-second memory. Fiction. Scientists have proved that goldfish memory is nowhere near as short as three seconds. They conducted two experiments with fish food, which proved that goldfish can actually remember things for as long as five months. 10.3. What are they talking about? 1. A glass of dry white wine and a mineral water, please. Still or sparkling? Sparkling, please. Do you want ice and lemon with that? Just ice, thanks. How much is that? Two. Oh, I can't believe it. My screen's frozen again. Switch it off, unplug it and take the battery out. Then start it up again. That's the only thing that ever works for me. OK, here goes. Three. So, how did it go? Not too bad, thanks. Were you very nervous? Yeah, but I tried not to show it. When were you here? In a couple of days. They said they'd phone me at the end of the week and let me know. Four. Have you any idea what to get them? Not really, but it should be something special. Yeah, 25 years is a long time. It would be nice to get something silver. Yeah. Well, why don't we club together and get something from both of us? Then we can afford something really nice. Good idea. Mum and Dad would love that. Five. Right, left at the next crossroads. What? Left or right? I said left, right? What? Ah! Ah, oh, that was close. Now, left up that hill and look in your mirrors, not at me. Right? Ten point four. What went wrong? Rick. Alex, you're back. Did you and Hannah have a good time? Really? What on earth happened?
I bet you were furious with her. That's the one thing you do need to travel these days. Did you go back to get it? By four hours? That's a long time. Were things OK when you finally took off? I know, my poor sister. Turbulence can be really scary. Hannah must have been terrified. So, did things get better when you landed? You poor things. No sleep after that nightmare journey. Didn't you complain? Three o'clock. Were things any better the next day? So, even the weather was awful. Sorry, Alex, but Leah and I were much luckier in Spain. We had cloudless skies every day. What? No sun at all? Just wind and rain? You're kidding. You must have been so glad to get home and go back to work. 10.5 What went wrong? Rick and Alex Alex, you're back! Did you and Hannah have a good time? <laughs> it was the worst holiday ever. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Really? What on earth happened? Well, it began in the taxi on the way to the airport when Hannah realised she'd left her passport on the kitchen table. I bet you were furious with her. That's the one thing you do need to travel these days. Did you go back to get it? Yes, of course we had to. Oh, it was a mad rush. But we needn't have hurried because when we finally got to the airport, the plane was delayed by four hours. By four hours? That's a long time. Were things OK when you finally took off? No, things got even worse. The flight was a nightmare, a really bumpy ride, and Hannah is afraid of flying at the best of times. I know, my poor sister. Turbulence can be really scary. Hannah must have been terrified. So, did things get better when you landed? <laughs> I wish. It was dark when we arrived at the hotel and we were exhausted. So, we went straight to bed, but we couldn't sleep. There was a party or something going on in the room next door and the walls were paper thin. You poor things. No sleep after that nightmare journey. Didn't you complain? Yeah, we banged on the walls, but they couldn't hear. Finally, we rang the hotel reception and they gave us a different room. But by that time, it was three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock? Were things any better the next day? Well, in the morning, we opened the curtains and guess what? It was raining! Oh, not what you expect in Bermuda. So, even the weather was awful. Sorry, Alex, but Leah and I were much luckier in Spain. We had cloudless skies every day. Oh, yeah, and it continued to rain for the rest of the week. Apparently, it was the tail end of Hurricane Gonzalo. Oh, just our luck. What? No sun at all? Just wind and rain? Uh, not exactly. The sun finally came out as we were travelling to the airport to come home. You're kidding. You must have been so glad to get home and go back to work. 10.6 Might have Could have Can't have May have Must have 10.7 You must have been worried. I can't have lost it. It could have been stolen. I might have dropped it. She may have found it. 10.8 What on earth? What on earth has happened? How on earth could that have happened? Where on earth have you been? 10.9 A I can't carry all these shopping bags. What on earth have you bought? B Tom's broken his arm in three places. How on earth did he do that? 
C. There's someone at the door. Who on earth could it be at this time of night? D. My aunt left all her money to a cat's home. Why on earth did she do that? E. I can't find my car keys. Where on earth have you put them? 10.10 .10. My Solo Wedding I lie awake in my hotel room in Kyoto, nearly 6,000 miles from home, my stomach in knots. My mind is racing with thoughts of my wedding tomorrow. I take a deep breath and tell myself I don't have anything to worry about. I can't be stood up at the altar because the person I'm marrying is myself. 10.11 the man who posted himself to Australia. We first met in the 62 Commonwealth Games that were held in Perth, Australia, and we immediately got on. We just hit it off. And both very accomplished athletes, national champions, record holders at the Javelin. Well, you know, we'd built up a friendship in Australia and we wrote to each other. People wrote letters in those days. <laughs> and then there's a knock, knock, knock on my door and it's Reg. He was over... And fortunately, I was able to, to put him up and he stayed for well, about four or five months. But as you say, Reg, you got injured and you wanted no. to get home to see you, yeah. you were married yeah. by now. You had a little girl. Yeah. You wanted yeah, to get yeah. home um, for her birthday. And there was one catch. I didn't have any money. <laughs> Reg, after a little while, got a job and he was um, earning some money <laughs> at the airport. So while he was working there, he was saving up to go home and then he had his wallet pinched. So I had to find another way home. So where, where did this idea come from to disguise you as air freight? Oh, I worked for Air France and I worked in the export cargo section. So I saw animals coming through on aircraft and it just came to me. I thought, well, wait a minute. Hang on a minute. <laughs> the biggest piece of freight you could put on an aircraft to go to Australia was, I remember, five feet by three feet by two and a half feet. That was the biggest that the plane could take. But you thought, I know, I'll get in a box and send myself home to Australia. Why not? <laughs> and I was in a hurry. <laughs> John, what did you think when you heard this idea? Well, when he first came back with this idea, we thought, you know, he was joking and, and so on. But there was an intensity about it. And uh, we thought, God, this guy's serious. So if he's going to do it, I'd better make him a box. So how did you go about <laughs> making this box, John? He told me it's got to be five feet by three feet by two and a half because Reg is about six foot two, well built and handsome and all that sort of thing. So five feet by three feet by two and a half allows him to sit up with his legs straight or lie back with his legs bent. Where did you make this box, John? Uh, made it largely largely in the flat, but we found that um, looking at it in, in the light, in certain light, you could actually see through the cracks. So we had to line the inside of it with uh, some paper because he, he, he actually went as plastic emulsion. That's what was written on the box, was it? Plastic that, emulsion. That's what was written on the box to be sent to a, a Mr. Graham and collected. We made up the company... Uh, fictitious address in London, fictitious address in Perth. Was your family in Australia aware of this plan, Reg? No. No, 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 no. No, I wouldn't, wouldn't, no they'd worry. So the big day came, a Saturday yeah. in West London. Tell us what happened that day. How did you prepare, Reg? For, for how, do you, how do you prepare? You don't prepare. You just get in the box and go. John, <laughs> well, when Reg is getting into this box, what have you put in there for supplies for him? For supplies? Well, he's, he's got a couple of plastic bottles, you know, one to pee in and one to drink. He's got, you know, various food items. Mainly baked beans. Probably not a good move. And then... <laughs> There's a thought. Um, he's got his bag. He's got a torch. Pillow and a blanket. Were you strapped in there, Reg? Well, there were straps in there, yes. Yeah. If, if they turned the box upside down, which they did one time, it all held me in place. Now, Reg had an enormous appetite, so we had to... Slow his system down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't eat for weeks. Literally, you didn't eat for a week? No, I didn't eat for a week. It was very, it, it, well, I was young. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was it. He was off. 
So what's going on with this box that you're in, Reg, while you're waiting for the plane to take off? I, I can see out of through the slats, and they had a huge freight shed, and they took the, the, the crate in there, and they put it up high. Oh, dear. And then out to the aeroplane, see you later. Simple as that. It was pitch black most of the way. It was about 60 hours in the thing. What were you thinking about in there? My life up to that point, you know, all sorts of thoughts go through you. But I wasn't frightened. I'm up here, everything's working, I'm breathing, I'm not cold, it's not that comfortable, but I can make it. So I just carried on. So next leg was to Bombay. Bombay. And it's so hot, I've taken all my clothes off. You know, I think it went to Singapore, and then I think it went to Perth. I knew when it hit Perth. The hold opened up. These uh, these Aussie guys came in and said, this big so-and-so thing, this is not for us, is it? And they, yeah, it's for us. I knew where I was. I'm home. How did that feel to be back in Australia? Oh, it was terrific. Wonderful. Did you make it in time for your daughter's birthday? Yeah. And your wife? She was happy to see me, of course. What did she say when you told her how you'd got home? She didn't believe me. <laughs> she didn't believe it. But then she thought about it for a moment and thought, well, well yes, the silly, uh, the silly man has done just that. 10.12. I've just found out. 1. I've just found out that my sister's expecting a baby. That's fantastic. When's it due? 2. I don't ever fall out with my wife. What? Never? You're kidding. I don't believe it. Three. I can't work out if I feel warm or cold today. Yeah, it's one of those days. Four. I'm saving up to take my grandparents on holiday. That's kind. They must be delighted. Five. I need to sort out my life. I've got problems at work and I've got problems with my boyfriend. Poor you. Come on, let's go out for a drink. Take your mind off things. Six. I've just come up with a fantastic idea. Uh, I'll believe it when I hear it. Seven. I'm going to take up rock climbing. I need a new hobby. Are you mad? You feel dizzy climbing a stepladder. Eight. It's important to make up after an argument. Yeah, kiss and make up. Never let the sun go down on an argument. 10.13 Have you read about this girl? Have you read about this girl? Which girl? An American girl. Apparently, she's just had a solo wedding. A solo wedding? What on earth is that? Well, incredibly, it means you get married all by yourself. <laughs> You're kidding? Do you mean there's no groom? No husband? Exactly. <laughs> Where was this? I bet it was in California. No, no, it wasn't. In fact, it was in Japan in Kyoto. Apparently, solo weddings are becoming quite popular there. Really? Why? Surely it's a really sad thing to do. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. But it says here some girls just enjoy dressing up and being a princess for the day. Oh, oh dear. Presumably, these girls don't have boyfriends. <laughs> Obviously not. I don't think any boyfriend would like the idea. <laughs> Well, personally, I think the whole thing is silly. Mm, I know. And anyway, I like the way we got married. It was good fun. Yeah, it was. And romantic. Why did the American girl do it? Uh, she's a photographer oh, and a journalist. She must have just wanted the story. <laughs> of course. And it's a good one. 10.14 Expressing Attitude 1. Hi, you're Pete, aren't you? Actually, no, I'm not. Pete's over there, talking to Robert. 2. What did you think of the film? Great, wasn't it? Personally, I thought it was rubbish. I just don't like all that blood and fighting. 
Three. What's the latest gossip about Kate and her boyfriend? Apparently, she's going to dump him. She's met someone else. Four. What's the weather like in spring? Generally, it's warm during the day, but you still need to wear a jumper or cardigan in the evening. Five. What time will we arrive? Hopefully in the next hour, unless there's another traffic jam. Six. I phoned and left messages for them, but no reply. Presumably they're away on holiday. Try them on their mobile. Seven. What did you do when you saw the accident? Obviously we called 999 immediately, then went to see if we could do anything to help. Eight. How did you feel when they offered you the job? To be honest, I was amazed. I didn't expect to get it, but of course I was delighted. It'll be a challenge. 11.1 .1. Pen and paper or screen and keyboard In an experiment, school children did a reading comprehension test, some on paper and some on screen. The ones who did the test on paper got the highest scores. University students generally did better on paper too, apart from those students who had expressed a preference for screen reading. Only 21% of the students asked in one survey preferred e-textbooks to physical books. Many enjoyed the e-textbooks they used, but said they easily got distracted from them. As for writing notes on paper by hand, it may be slower than on a laptop, but research by a professor at the University of California shows that the slowness and physical effort involved means that people have a greater understanding of what they've written. 11.2 Talking about you 1. Where did you have lunch today? 2. Where's your mother at the moment? 3. Do you prefer tea or coffee? 4. Do you know the name of the river in London? 5. Have you got a pet? What is it? What's its name? 6. What's your father's job? 7. How did you come to class? 8. Do you know the names of any English or American newspapers? 9. Where are you sitting in the room? Where is the teacher? 10. Where are you going after the lesson? 11.3 It's or it's 1. Living in London has its disadvantages. 2. To start with, there's a lot of traffic. 3. Londoners enjoy their parks and open spaces. 4. For them, it's important to escape busy city life. 5. Londoners seem very busy. They're always in a rush. 6. Ethnic communities like the Bangladeshis have their own part of London, and the Koreans have theirs. 11.4 How would you like your newspaper, sir? 1. Jacob One thing I'd never dream of reading a print version of nowadays is newspapers. They look so old-fashioned to me when I see them on the newsstand at the rail station every morning. These great big piles of paper you have to fold up and carry around with you. And then you have to find somewhere to throw them away when you've finished with them. Madness. I love reading my news online on a tablet. I read it on the train on the way to work and in my lunch break. I read The Guardian and it's beautifully designed digitally. 
I also love reading the comment threads after the articles. You sometimes learn more from them than you do from the articles. They're not always a great read, though. Some people write such miserable things on them. Always moaning about everything. 2. Karen I did a landscape design course at college, and computers were already the big thing then. So we did most of our projects using the software you can get for it. You can drag and drop different plants and trees and garden features onto your design, and then move them around, and change their size as well. Uh, it is cool, but we had to draw some designs by hand just to show we could do it. And I realised that, mm, even though I'm not the world's greatest drawer, I enjoyed doing it that way. So now I always start off drawing my projects by hand. Uh, it just feels more real. And if you're a gardener, which I was for a long time, you kind of like things being real, you know, down to earth. Trouble is... I usually do have to transfer what I've done on paper um, onto a software programme to send to my clients. I uh, don't think they'd be impressed with my drawings. 3. Luke I like having my music digital and streaming it. It's brilliant that you can log on wherever you are and play your music. I like streaming films too. It was a bore having to rent DVDs or buy them and have them sitting around when you're never going to watch them again. But the time it really bothers me when things are digital is when it comes to giving gifts. It's a bit rubbish at Christmas or on birthdays when you just give someone a piece of paper telling them you've bought them something they can download. You want to give them something solid, a gift they can hold and see the shape of and wonder what it is. I like wrapping them up really nicely too. And it's nice to see them looking at the gift when they open it. Unless they don't like it, of course. And it is harder to change something when it's real. 4. Emily I was pretty nervous about trying online dating at my age, but it's so much easier than those old-fashioned Lonely Hearts columns in newspapers. I used those a bit when I was young you never really knew who you were dealing with. Now you can find out so much about someone before you decide whether you want to meet them and also chat online for a while before you make the decision. And the site I belong to offers great activities that you can do with people who share your interests. It's not just about meeting in bars, which I hate. It's such an easy way to meet new people, even if it doesn't end in romance. The thing I would like to bring back from the old days is old-fashioned love letters, though. Texts and emails can't match those. 5. Charlie uh, I like playing games on my tablet and chatting with friends online. Uh, and I like reading stuff on the internet. We sometimes have to do that for homework. But when I'm reading for fun, I prefer proper books. It feels more special reading a book, especially when they have pictures in. Um, the pictures aren't as big on a tablet. I like Roald Dahl stories best. I love reading them in bed at night. It's not so easy with a tablet. Um... My other favourite thing is doing jigsaws. I've just done a 500-piece one I got for my birthday. You can do them online as well, and it's fun, but it's better with a real jigsaw. I like sorting all the pieces out into different shapes, but I don't like it when there's a piece missing. 6. Holly. I can seem a bit old-fashioned when it comes to technology. Of course, I use a computer all the time at work, but I am one of those people who disapproves of everyone always being on their phones. But there's one gadget I absolutely adore, the sat-nav. It's a lifesaver for me. 
I'm hopeless at finding my way around when I'm driving, and it used to be a nightmare using a map, trying to work out where you are when other drivers are beeping and shouting at you for going so slow. You still see those books of maps at petrol stations. I can't believe that people still use them. I mean, who on earth buys them? Now I have Derek, that's what I call my sat-nav man, telling me when to turn. I like the calm way it gives directions. Derek never gets angry with me. But it can sometimes feel a bit dangerous if I stare at the sat-nav too long, though. I forget that that's not the real road. It's the one out of the window. 11.5 Compound Nouns Music Collection Computer Games Lifetime Band Members 11.6 A Sleeping Pill A Sleeping Pill 11.7 I Need One of Those Things 1. I need one of those things you use when you want to open a bottle of wine. You know, uh, you pull it and it goes pop. 2. I'm looking for some of that stuff you use when you want to clean between your teeth. It's like string. It's white. You use it like this? 3. They are long and thin, and the Chinese use them to pick up food. 4. It's a made of plastic, and it's used for killing flies. Splat! Spoof! 5. They're things you use when you're cooking, and you want to pick up something that's hot. 11.8. What is it? 1. It's one of those things you use in the kitchen. You use it to do the washing up. 2. It's long and thin and sharp at one end. The other end has a hole in it, and you use it with some very thin stuff that goes through the hole. You can use them together for putting buttons on clothes. 3. It uh, looks like a metal bowl, but it has uh, holes in it. You use it to drain the water from things uh, like uh, pasta. 4. It's the stuff you wash clothes with. You put it in the washing machine. Uh, it's a powder, and it smells like soap. 5. It's used for fastening your clothes together if a button has fallen off. It's a kind of metal pin, but it has a top on it that covers the sharp end and stops it hurting you. 6. They are made of metal. You use them to hold sheets of paper together. You can get small ones or really big, thick ones if you have a lot of sheets of paper that need to be kept together. 7. It's a kind of ruler. You use it to measure things that are very long, like a room. It's made of metal, usually. 8. It's something you use when you're travelling. You put it on your suitcase so no one can get into it. You have a key to open it to take it off. 9. You know, it's got a round metal bit at one end, and the other end is made of glass. You put it in a lamp to make a light. 11.9 1. 
It's one of those things you use in the kitchen. 2. It's the stuff you wash clothes with. 3. It's used for fastening your clothes together. 4. They're made of metal. 5. It's a kind of ruler. 11.10. In the shop. Conversation 1. Yes, madam. How can I help you? I'm looking for a thing you use in the house. Yes. Now, what do you want to do with it, exactly? Well, it's not one thing. It's two things. And they're usually made of plastic. Uh-huh. You know, if you make a mess, like you drop bread or smash a glass, and there are bits all over the floor... And you need to pick them up. Yes! <laughs> you go like this. What you're talking about is... Conversation 2. Can I help you, sir? Uh, yes. I don't know how you say this in English. I'm looking for a thing you use in the kitchen. Okay. Uh, it's like a thing with, uh, you know, holes. Uh-huh. Uh, what's it for? Uh, well, it's for cheese or vegetables like carrots. And what do you do with it? If you don't want a big piece of cheese or a whole carrot, but you want little pieces, you can push, um, you can move, uh, I don't know how to say it, uh, like this. Oh, OK. What you mean is... 12.1. Just leave me alone. A tramp was sleeping on a park bench. A lady stopped and asked, Excuse me, what time is it? The tramp was annoyed at being woken up. He told her, I haven't got a watch, so I don't know the time. He went back to sleep. A bit later, a boy stopped. He also woke the tramp and asked, Excuse me, do you know the time? The tramp replied angrily, I have no idea what the time is. I'm trying to sleep. By now, he was really fed up, so he wrote a sign. I don't know what the time is. He put it next to him on the bench and went back to sleep. Half an hour later, a policeman was passing. He read the sign, woke the tramp up and said, Good evening, sir. It's nine o'clock. <laughs> Twelve point two. Just leave him alone. A tramp was sleeping on a park bench when a lady stopped and asked him what time it was. The tramp was annoyed at being woken up. He told her that he didn't have a watch, so he didn't know the time, and he went back to sleep. A bit later, a boy stopped. He also woke the tramp and asked if he knew the time. The tramp replied angrily that he had no idea what the time was, and he added that he was trying to sleep. By now he was really fed up, so he wrote a sign. I don't know what the time is. He put it next to him on the bench and went back to sleep. Half an hour later, a policeman was passing. He read the sign, woke the tramp up, and told him that it was nine o'clock. 12.3. Direct speech. 1. Where is he? 2. I don't know where he is. I haven't seen him for years. 3. Is he still on the payroll? Has he retired or died? 4. What have you been doing for so many years? 5. Why did you take your pay despite doing no work? 6. 
I didn't keep regular hours because I was bullied and I became depressed. 7. I'm making good use of my time. I've been studying philosophy. 8. You will not receive a medal. 12.4. Had or would. 1. Did you accept the job? Will you accept the job? 2. Where do you work? Where have you worked? 3. We travelled by train. We'll travel by train. 12.5. Asking questions politely. 1. Could you tell me where the station is? 2. Could you possibly tell me how much you earn? 3. Would you mind telling me how much you paid for that shirt? 4. Do you know when the banks close? 5. I wonder if Kate's coming. 12.6. Asking more politely. Can you tell me what time you normally get up? About 7 on weekdays, 10 at weekends. I don't know what kind of music you like. Oh, I like anything that helps me to relax. Have you any idea what your dream job is? Well, I'd like to be my own boss. Failing that, an astronaut. I'd like to know who your favourite sports person is. I don't have one. I like so many. I wonder which football team you support. Isn't it obvious from the scarf I'm wearing? Arsenal! Have you ever wondered how much time you spend in front of a screen each day? It's a lot. Too much. I don't like to think about it. Have you any idea how many times a day you check your phone? Oh, loads. About ten times an hour. I feel lost without it. Can you tell us why you left your last job? I was made redundant. Could you tell me how long you've been learning English? What do you mean? I am English. Can't you tell? I want to know why you don't reply to my texts. Uh, well, uh, my phone wasn't working for a while. 12.7. A wonderful way to make a living. Today I am in Venice, not far from the Piazza San Marco. The sun is out. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. The place is literally crawling with tourists. It seems like a wonderful place to visit. But would it be a wonderful place to make a living? Now here's a promising place. And we're going to see if we can interview a professional gondolier. My name is Giovanni Giudice and I am a gondolier and I I would never lose this for anything. <laughs> There's a reason why this man sounds so cheerful. Because apart from the obvious delights of working in Venice, Giovanni was initially going to become a lawyer, a career he wisely gave up at age 26. Now it's 10 years I don't touch a book of law anymore because it's a style of life that I do prefer. You meet people with no problems and uh, you don't make money on problems of people. And uh, you make money on the happiness of people on their holidays. You meet families when they're together, not when they're getting divorced and uh, all these things. Back where I come from in the United States, everyone hates lawyers, but everyone wants their kid to be a lawyer because they make a lot of money. 
but there's very few opportunities to be a gondolier. Um, you had parents who were professionals. How did they react when you said, I'm going to give up law to become a gondolier? They didn't react well, but I was sure it was the good choice. When you say that they didn't react well, could you be a bit more specific? This is the voice of my father. Giovanni, if you want to do the bloody gondolier, you find yourself <laughs> kicked out. <laughs> As far as I'm aware, the only other place in the world you can be a gondolier is in the desert at Las Vegas, at the Phoenician Hotel, where a singing gondolier will sweep you down their Grand Canal for a ride like no other. There are more than a thousand lawyers in Venice and only 425 gondoliers. Except that becoming a gondolier is more difficult than becoming a lawyer. For a start, there's the 30,000 euro price tag on the boat. So how did you learn to be a gondolier? I found myself, uh, um, we say a godfather. Now, don't laugh, though, he's not the godfather of mafia. Godfather is uh, somebody who introduces you to life. His name is David Scarpa, and for me, he's the most important person in my adult life because he gave me the job. So I spent two years, more or less, always with him. Actually, every single boy had his own godfather. Right. Every single boy had his own santolo. That is a Venetian word. Most of the gondoliers that I've seen look to be in pretty good physical shape. But there's a you don't see them naked. I've seen a, I've s <laughs> okay. I've seen a few overweight gondoliers. Yeah, yeah. Do they that reach a point where they can't be gondoliers anymore? <laughs> they sink the boat? They sink. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't see them anymore because they just sink. Actually, there is a gondolier we call the, the Maestro. <laughs> he's next to be retired, actually. And he's really, really, really overweight. Se ci separò l'aria del destino Na, 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 na Na, 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 na. Sempre a te vicino. When we just went past the boat where the accordion player was playing and the man was singing, the gondolier wasn't singing. Do gondoliers still sing? Well, actually, this is a myth. We don't sing. We never sang, actually. Never, 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 never. It doesn't happen. Do you decide in the beginning of the year how much money you want to make a year? <laughs> no. No. You know, Joe, it's nice to ask to a fisherman this question. Or you don't know how many people will come. You can decide how many days of holidays you want to do. So my target for this year is to give up the 1st of December and come back the 1st of April because I want to see a bit of winter in Australia. They say the surf is excellent over there in Australia. Spend the whole March on the east coast of Australia. Are there unhappy gondoliers? Oh, there's plenty of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. All those who were not lawyers once upon, <laughs> they don't realize what a mine of gold and happiness they have in their hands. So uh, this is a job in which actually you can get upset every five minutes and you can laugh every two. And I decided to laugh. I'm healthy, finally wealthy. And uh, so, I mean, why not to laugh? The only thing... Uh, is that you don't have that much time to follow your sentimental life. So you have to find a very patient girl who, who will uh, know what does it mean to be a wife of a gondolier. Can you hear this bell? Yes. Uh, this is uh, my favorite bell. It's the bell of San Marco Square. It rings at noon and at midnight. Wherever you will be in the city at midnight tonight, in the full silence, you will hear this bell again, and it is a beauty, isn't it? Twelve point eight ways of speaking. Conversation one. Hmm, I'm not sure about that shirt. I don't think yellow suits you. Why do you always go for such bright colours? Hey, 
I can wear what I want. I like bright colours. OK. But you can't wear it with those green trousers. You look like a daffodil. Oh, I do not. I don't care what you say. I'm going to wear it. Conversation 2 This online shopping is getting out of hand. What do you mean? It's a great way to shop. But that's the fourth parcel in as many days. It's costing us a fortune. How dare you? And all the money you spend on your wretched motorbike? That's all right, I suppose. Don't lose your temper with me. I don't get stuff for my bike every day. Conversation 3 Have you heard about Bob and Maggie? Is that the couple at number 43? Yeah. Apparently, he's been having an affair with someone at work. Really? Who told you that? Maureen, from number 41. Conversation 4 We want to do something special for our anniversary. What about a weekend away in a spa hotel? Mm, not my kind of thing. I really hate being massaged and told to relax. It makes me more stressed. Well, there's always the new Italian on the high street. It's pricey, but... That's fine. I don't mind the expense. It's a special occasion. 12.9. Talking in clichés. 1. I left my phone on the bus. I'm lost without it. Come on. It's not the end of the world. So many meetings and no decisions made. I know. It's all talk and no action. 2. I can't make him see that there's a problem. Yes, it's like banging your head against a brick wall. I was about to text you and you texted me. Great minds think alike. 3. I don't know why you like Kim. She's strange. Well, it takes all sorts to make a world. Pat is full of good practical ideas. Yes, she certainly has both feet on the ground. 4. I've got ten exams in the next two weeks. I'd rather you than me. I've got three months' holiday. It's all right for Sam. 5. The report doesn't have to be sent in today. What? And I just bust a gut to get it done. I'm amazed. The garden looks great now. Thanks. But it's all in a day's work. 6. That lecture was awful. I was bored to death. You can say that again. I fell asleep. I reversed into a wall and broke a headlight. Never mind. It could have been worse. 7. I wonder if their marriage will last. Only time will tell. He loves nothing more than evenings at home. Ah, uh, he's a man after my own heart. 8. Our neighbours are extreme right wing. Oh, well. Live and let live. That's what I say. I lent Peter a hundred pounds and he never paid me back. That's awful. But you live and learn. <laughs>